And hello, everybody, and let's say hi to you. This is Excel and Power BI webinars from D Brown Consulting. I hope everyone's here. Just put your hands up if you can hear me. Click, click. I think I can see people stepping into the room. Please close the door behind you when you get in. So this is welcome to our business intelligence webinars. As today we're going to talk about uh, business intelligence with Microsoft Cortana. So what is Cortana? That's what we're going to talk about today. So I can see a request. So if you if you have a request, you want to say hello, I would like to say at least hello to one or two people before we start. So if you could just put your hands up, just click on the hand tool so that I could uh, activate the speech. So we could say hello. So I'm David. I'll be taking you to on this webinar on business intelligence with Microsoft Cortana. So I just want to explain what Cortana is and how it affects Power BI and how it kind of enhances Power BI. So that's what we'll be talking about today. So as I said, I'm David. I'm the founder and managing partner of D Brown Consulting. I'm also a consultant to the World Bank, and I've been using Excel and all the related technologies for more than 20 years. And Power BI is such a wonderful addition to Excel. And yes, when I say Excel, yes, Power BI is in Excel and it's also Power BI desktop and it's also a separate service. But all the technology of Power BI was built on Excel. So we've used Excel, it used to be, it's called Power Pivot in Excel, Power Query, there's Power View, there's Power Maps. There's all sorts of Power Power tools in Excel currently. And that technology is also in Power BI and that's Power BI Desktop. So today we'll be using mostly Power BI Desktop to do the demo, and but everything we do, well, for this, everything you do, you build a model in Power BI, it's actually the same thing in Excel, except for what we're gonna to do today called um, Q&A. All right. So a little bit about us, the sponsors of this um, talk is D Brown Consulting. And uh, D Brown Consulting, we do three main things, training, consulting, and payroll, but our focus is on the analyst. So everything we do is focused around the analyst. Who is the analyst? You have a reporting analyst, data analyst, financial analyst, sales analyst, anything analyst. If you have analyst in your name, we have a course for you or we have a solution for you. And um, I would like you guys to pop over to officetraininghub.com, officetraininghub.com. That's our online training hub. And there you'd be able to um, do some free courses. We have free courses in Excel. We're soon going to have a free course in PowerPoint and free course in, in Word. And we'll probably have also a free course in Power BI soon. And of course, there are other paid courses, but you could at least enjoy the free ones now. And that's officetraininghub.com. Right. These are our partners. We uh, partner with Microsoft and we also partner with Financial Modeling Institute. For those that like modeling or those that do modeling, there's another webinar that starts at um, 11 o'clock today. So that's just purely on financial modeling. So we're going to be talking about debt today. That's 11 o'clock today. So if you're interested, just type in the chats and someone will be able to type a link for you to register for the modeling webinar, which comes after this one. And also we are partners with Microsoft and the data analytics partners and also partner with ATD, ATD being association for talent development. For those that like talent development or HR and L&D stuff, we also have another webinar starting at two, two o'clock today that's talking about talent development. So quite a few webinars today. All right. So those are our sponsors. For courses, we these are the courses we do at D Brown Consulting. These are the classroom courses. We do business intelligence, Excel for business, financial analysis, Office 365, and financial modeling. So those are our core. And if you look at them, you see that every single course here is required by the analyst. That's why we say we are the analyst training hub. So that's us. Another thing we do, of course, is our online courses. And our online courses are on officetraininghub.com. So if you pop on over there, you'd see our online courses. We have a competency model for analysts, a very detailed competency model. If you're interested in that, send us an email. We'll send you the competency model. That means, okay, what should an analyst know? What are the things an analyst should know? We've, we have eight pillars. An analyst should kind of cover his knowledge or skills should cover eight pillars. We could send you that if you want. Just pop us an email at training at dbrownconsulting.net and we'll send you the 
competency model, you could send that to your HR or L&D. Right, super. So I think we can get started. What is Cortana? Power BI and Cortana, how do they work together? Q&A in Power BI Desktop, which is kind of a bit like machine learning and intelligence. Then we'll do a demo on Power BI Desktop. We'll look at the same thing online and see how that works. Then we do another demo on the exceptions to the rule of this um, power Q&A. Q&A when Q&A doesn't really work the way it should. There's something called synonyms. We should train the system to understand that something is also called something else, synonyms. So it's like uh, we're doing some grammar lessons for Power BI. We give it some small grammar lessons. Then a revenue of, for, of April updates, I mean, sorry, review of our April updates uh, for Power BI. What exactly did Power BI do in April? What are the updates for April? And then how you can sign up for our Power BI course in May. So those are the uh, things we have. Excellent. So let's get started. But before we do, I would like to know exactly how many people here even know what Cortana means. So can you answer this question? So I have a question on the poll. Have you used Cortana before? Okay, quite a few. It says 100% of us here have used Cortana. That's interesting. So we have a very educated field here. That's cool. All right. Let me see. All right, so if you've all used Cortana, let's ask you another question. Let's reset the poll. So what modern Excel tools do you use regularly? What are the modern tools you use regularly? Power Pivot, do you use Power Query? Do you use Power View? Do you use Power Maps? Do you use none of the above? So these are all the power tools, Power Pivot, Power Query, Power View, Power Maps, and none of the above, basically, you don't use any of them. Now for those that use Office 365, uh, there's there are quite a lot of uh, updates to Excel as well. I'll probably show you one or two if we have time. But um, let's move on to the slides. So let's just keep moving on. So what exactly is Cortana? I'm sure some of us that have Apple iPhones, we have the something called Siri. So Siri is, I mean, Siri is supposed to be your assistant. Let me see if I can get Siri up here. So let me ask Siri a question. Uh, let me see. Siri, what is Cortana? I'm asking Siri actually this question. Let's see if you can hear what Siri has to say. Yeah, Siri, what is Cortana? Let's ask Siri what's Cortana. I thought so. Oh, she thought so. So this is me talking to Siri. I want to ask Siri. So I'm asking some machine learning algorithms what another machine learning algorithm is. So let's see what Siri has to say. Yeah. Siri, what is Cortana? All right, here's what I got. Yeah, read it, read it. Oh, Siri, I don't think it's Siri. That's Apple and um, Microsoft are not really talking that much. So Siri, instead of Siri talking and telling me exactly what Cortana is, Siri decided to send me a, a, a kind of a, a list to, from the internet saying Cortana is a virtual assistant created by Microsoft for Windows 10, Windows 10 mobile and Windows 10 phone. Uh, in, and it invokes a uh, smart speaker, Microsoft Band, Xbox, Windows, Mixed Reality, Amazon Alexa, and soon it will actually invoke Amazon Alexa. And, and Alexa is Amazon's own Siri, um, Amazon's own Cortana, and uh, Apple's own um, Cortana, do you get so Apple's own um, Siri? So all these are uh, kind of AI and assistants, and they all use AI and machine learning. So yeah, that's what uh, Siri told me Cortana is, which is kind of straight to the point. That's that's true. So Cortana is a virtual assistant that can set reminders, recognize natural voice without keyboard input, and can answer questions using information from the Bing search engine. So that's that's what um, Cortana really is, which is cool. Not bad at all. So let's even see something else. What, what else can we hear about Cortana? So let me play you this video. I'll just play.
Hey, Cortana, what time is my lunch with Tony today? You have lunch with Tony at CJ's from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. Hey, Cortana, remind me to call Shana tomorrow. Sure. At what time? Hey, Cortana, remind me to pick up a bottle of Pinot when I leave work. All right. Hey, Cortana, play my chill playlist. Playing chill. Will I need an umbrella for my day tonight? That's probably not necessary. What's my day look like? When's my meeting with the investors? Remind me to go to the jewelry store on Saturday. Okay. What time does the sun set in Dominica? Sunset in Dominica is at 6.01 p.m. Hey, Cortana, remember my anniversary is June 6th. Sure thing. So that was Cortana, and uh, well, that's Microsoft Cortana. I'll send you the uh, link to that if you want to watch that again. So yes, it's the assistant. So we just talk and it works. I mean, if you see Elon Musk and his cars as well, I mean, you don't need to do anything. The car just works. So it's as if we're making us all humans disabled, right? Or like <laughs> disabled, we just need to talk. But no, this is just technology getting better and better. And uh, one nice thing is this is going to work with Power BI. So it currently does already, but soon you'll be able to something. What's the total sales for whatever? And Cortana will go to Power BI and actually ask Power BI those information. So you say, Cortana, what was the total sales last um, yesterday compared to last year, same period last year? And Cortana goes to Power BI, gets that information, and shows you that information on your laptop or wherever else you want it to show you. So that's where the technology is leading. And that's why Microsoft is really way high up there when it comes to the Gartner report. I'll talk about the Gartner report in a minute. So here, you could say, Hi, I'm Cortana, ask me a question. And you could say, what, set reminders for times, places, and people, use natural language searches for files on your system, identify a song, search the web with Google, uh, or even Bing, really, instead of, and then, or another search engine, which is Bing. Bing is the default search engine for uh, Microsoft. Perform calculations and conversions, track flights, find facts, check the weather, get directions, set alarms, launch programs, send emails, create calendars and events and chat. So it's good if you download and start using Cortana, you have Office 365, and start getting used to using it. And it's, it's quite cool. I mean, you, you go and read a little bit of stuff about Alexa, which is the Google um, uh, or the Amazon. Amazon has, Google has, um, Apple has, Microsoft have. So it's... And all these systems will be talking to each other. Cortana will talk to uh, Alexa. Alexa will also talk to Siri. So it's, it's getting more and more interesting. Yeah. But if you also read about AI, there's some fears of AI by Elon Musk and some other people like that. It's also good to know what are the dangers of this technology. But the fact is, once the technology is in good hands, like Microsoft, at least you know they're being used well. But Others could get, their, get a hold of it, right? But, but not being a prophet of doom, but it's also good to know what are the negatives of this and try and avoid them, especially even in your business as well. So Power BI and Cortana. What do we expect for Power BI and Cortana? So as I mentioned already, it's kind of a simple thing. You talk to Cortana, you ask Cortana a question, Cortana now has that link to Power BI and by it basically asks the question to Power BI or most likely types the question in something like Q&A to Power BI. And once it types the question as Q&A to Power BI, then of course your reports now come out and you see your reports. So that's going to be the link. It's going to be seamless. So you could basically say you're talking to your system and it's bringing out your reports in Power BI. But the link is Cortana. And, and this is happening now. This is already up and go, up and running. And it's just going to get better and better and better. As Cortana learns, you understand what you want. You probably, at a point, you probably know what you want before you do because of routines. So that's cool. Now, if you look at the uh, latest Gartner report. Now, the Gartner report, they're a... Uh, 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 they're a research company that evaluates many things, many IT-related stuff. So this is their own report on BI. And if you look at it to the left, if you look to the left and going up from the left, is the ability to execute. 
how can people, how good are these products in execution? And then from the left going to the right is completeness of vision. Have we, do they have uh, uh, their vision? Is it very clear? So for those that are kind of have a little, the execution is not as good and their vision is not fully formed. That's the box to the bottom left, bottom left box. And you could see um, um, names that you could know. Oracle is there. Um, who else could you know? Locker, Information Builder. Well, so those guys have quite a bit to do. They call them the niche players. The challengers are the ones that have a very good execution, but the vision is not fully formed. The micro strategy is there. The bottom right are those whose vision is pretty clear, but execution is not as good. So SAS is there. Um, I'm sure you know Salesforce. But then the real big players, the top guys, are the leaders. The leaders are the ones who execute well. That's going from bottom to top and also have good vision. Their vision for what it is they plan for the future is very clear. And you can see Microsoft's vision is completely formed, almost completely formed. You can see Microsoft's right to the right hand side. And Tableau, which is then the biggest competitor, is to, his vision is not as clear as Microsoft, but the execution is kind of similar, a little notch higher. But Microsoft's execution is also excellent. And this is all Power BI. So you could, you could replace Microsoft with Power BI. And uh, for me, really working with Excel for like 22 years, Power BI is just amazing. Because one of the missing pieces for me is when you do this wonderful report in Excel, how do you share this report with your audience? How do you share it? Most people share by email. So what ends up happening in your organization is you have thousands and thousands of Excel files all over the place. If your IT, I always tell IT this, that if your IT does a star.xls search on your entire office database, they will see hun more, probably 100,000 files, Excel, which means these are 100,000 um, versions of the truth all over the place. It's not good to share documents that way because you send an email to 10 people that means 10 people have 10 excel files and uh, then those 10 people kind of do some amendments and create another 10 excel files so which, which one is the latest so what you should do to try and get this as a practice don't share excel files by email instead publish your excel file on powerbi.com so when you publish it on powerbi.com any updates you make to that file will be updated on powerbi.com and everybody will get access to it so that's how to work to me, that's the best way to work. Now, with Q&A, that's just another ball game completely. With Q&A, what that means is you can ask Excel, you can ask Excel a question through Power BI, or you can ask Power BI directly a question about your data model. So we're not going to go through the data model. We're just going to do a demo. So I'm just going to go and ask Excel or ask Power BI a question through Q&A. So let's see how that works. So we're going to quick, quickly go into the demo for Power BI. Cool. So I'm going to share my screen and you'll see that I have Power BI up. One second. Let me just set that up. This is Power BI desktop. All right, guys. So here we have uh, Power BI. So this is Power BI desktop. I know quite a few of us here already use these tools, I hope. Uh, let me just quickly check with you guys. How many of us here know about this tool? So I know how deep I should go. So what I would like to know is what business intelligence tools do you currently use? Before I continue with this demo, can you answer this question of what business intelligence tools do you use currently? All right, so it seems like quite a few of us here use Power BI and Power Pivot. So we have we have quite an um, educated field here, which is excellent. So if you look at this, so I have a data model that means you guys know already what a data model is so let's let's um let's have a look at it all right so if i go to my view if i go to modeling you have your of course your home tab your view tab your modeling tab and then your help tab that's typical now they've added a few stuff here for april um but let's go to the actual relationship view so if you check the relationship view, just to have a look at the data model and understand our data model, um, let's do that. 
click there. So this is our data model. I have my line of business files, my model, D model. This is just a model code and model name. The store, list of stores. If I go to the table here, you could see store. Let's see what uh, it looks like. So we have store key, um, store itself, then market, and then we have region. So the store key is obviously very important. If you if you know VLOOKUP very well, the store this is probably what you look up to try and get information in another table. Um, you have your line of business. So I have my line of business code, and I have my line of business itself, copy of sales, and um, uh, printer sales, parts, and, and sales uh, service plan. Then let's see another table. I have uh, model, the model, what's the model? Well, these are the th products I'm selling. So this is the model code and this is the model name. So Xerox, uh, Xerox Ultra, Copy, HP, LaserJet, Printer Repair. So these are all the products that I sell, right? And then of course we have a calendar. It's very important you have a calendar for those that know Power, Power Pivot. You, or Power BI in general, you need to use a calendar at all times, right? We need to use a calendar. Cool. So let's see that. Let me end the poll. Um, you have about 63% of us use Power BI, 25% use Power Pivot, and then others, 13% use others. So the 13% that use others, please move on to Power BI. Well, let's see. We'll, we'll show you a few stuff here to convince you. Um, yeah, so let's quickly get back to this okay cool so here here I am, and this is just my data so this is my calendar and we need a calendar to do all sorts of analytics so we have your data there and what do you do normally when you build a data model is you need to understand all the connections so you're connecting your dimension files which i have up here you're connecting your dimension files to your fact file your fact file is where the data really resides the data that grows every day your sales data is in your fact file so this is my fact file. And typically when you build a, a fact file, you have to build it pretty smart. So what we call the lowest granularity, you need to build it with the lowest granularity in mind. And what do I mean by that? So here I have revenue and then I have units sold. Uh, this is sales on a daily basis. The most important field I think is your date. So this is your date, you sold this in. And then this is the model. What did you sell? This is the product you sold. So this is the code for the product, that's model. Then we have line of business. Okay, so what line of business ID is this product? Now this may not be necessary because line of business, the model itself may tell you the line of business that is if it's a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship, that means uh, if every time this model, this is the line of business. But sometimes a model can be used for different lines of business. So it's not a one-to-one -one relationship. So you have to have line of business as a separate line. Then store, you can see store ID. So these are the stores I sold. So this is the lowest granularity for geography for me. So based on my store, I could know, okay, this store is in one particular location, let's say Abuja. Or, and then because we know it's in Abuja, that means it is in the north. Because we know it's in the north, okay, it's in Nigeria, and then it's in Africa. And that's how you get the lowest level of granularity for your store. Some people even go down to a store address and then they go to a local government and stuff. So that's geography. So this is your core. One key thing is when you're building a data model, try as much as possible to make your fact file as slim as possible. Don't have too many things there. So for example, this model, you don't need to have model name, model manager, just have model. And then connect model to another table called the dimension file that will give you more details, which is what we have here. So this is our data model. Everybody connected to our fact file down here. Now, if you notice, our fact file has formulas. So these are all our DAX. DAX is the language of Power BI. DAX is the language of Power Pivot. And if you want to be an excellent user of Power BI, you need to learn DAX. DAX is a very important language. Just take it like Excel. If you go to Excel, you need to learn formulas. You need to learn functions. So, and the nice thing about Microsoft is they made this thing almost close to Excel, kind of similar to Excel. So if you are building a formula in Excel and you're now building DAX, it's similar. It's similar, so you have it's easy for you to transit. It's easier for you to understand how that works. 
So now if I come to my report, let's now see if we can do a report. Let's say I want to do a report on revenue. So a typical report, let's come to our visuals. I'll just do a simple report. I click on a chart. So this is my chart. And I want to do a report on revenue by, by state or let's say revenue by region. So I go to my fields here. I pick revenue. So if I go to my fact file, let me expand that a bit. So there's so many calculations we've done here. So let's say revenue sum. So revenue sum, okay, click that or click out. It gives me, I have to click on the visual you want. Click on the visual first and then you tick revenue sum. So that's revenue sum for the entire period. Um, let's slice it by something. Let's slice it by, uh, let's, say, let's slice it by store. So store, we have region in store. So I'm going to tick region. And here we go. We have revenue sliced by region. Not bad. That's fine. So revenue sliced by region. Okay. Well, what period is this? Well, we, we, we'll check, but let us let me change the visual. We can come here. I can click on the visual, and then I can change it to something else. Let's say um, a tree map. I always like this tree map visual. So you decide, okay, what visual do I, do I think is, is cool? Well, what about if I want to say, okay, revenue, revenue sum uh, for what years do we have? Let's quickly glance at the years we have. What years of information? Let's say 2015. So now I want to say revenue sum for 2015. And I, I really don't want to create the chart. I just want to ask, uh, I just want to ask Power BI a question. Modeling, um, um, if you check out, um, uh, sorry, your home tab, you'll see a, something called ask a question. So this is actually new. This came in, I think, a month or two ago. You couldn't do this before. You couldn't ask a Power BI desktop a question. You had to go online. Uh, you have to go to the online version to ask a question. Now you can ask the question directly at on Power BI desktop. So I click ask a question. That's one way to do it. And then you see this ask a question box to the bottom. That's one way to ask a question. Another way to ask a question, if I delete this, I just double click, just double click the canvas. So let me minimize this so you can see bigger. Double click any white space in the canvas, double click, and it's ready to ask a question. So we said revenue, let's just say uh, revenue sum um, by region for 2015. So once we've done that, so I just said revenue sum by region for 2015, it came out and we can say maybe as a tree map, let's see if that works. Tree, oh, wow. So, so look at that. So revenue sum 2015 uh, as a tree map and it brings out our chart. So let's see, do we have 2014 data? Let's check 2014. Okay. As a tree map. Our data are similar for 2015 and 2014. Not good for ana analytics, but so that's how easy it is to just write a question. But then sometimes you run into a problem because for you, you know your model. So if I look at my model here, I know that whoever built this model decided to call uh, sales revenue, right? So revenue is called revenue. So you have revenue sum, revenue sum last month. And as much as possible, when you build your model and you're naming your DAX, try and name it very smartly. So don't, don't just say rev, just say revenue. So when you're using Q&A, Q&A understands what you're saying. So this is revenue year to date, revenue year to date, LY. What about if you don't want to use revenue? Let's say, let's come here, let's do another Q&A. Let me delete this. Let's just delete, delete. So I want to do this same report, but instead of calling a revenue, somebody had called it sales. So I double click here and say sales, sales uh, by region, sales by region for 2015. Now, unfortunately, um, nothing is happening. Why is nothing happening? Can you guys type in your chat? I'd like us to, any, any ideas what, what's going on? Why isn't this working? Someone should tell me.
So type in the chat, what do you think is going on here? Why isn't it working? So it, it isn't working because um, Q&A doesn't know what sales means. Q&A understands revenue, but doesn't understand sales. So to make it more intelligent, so to say, we need to go and um, tell it that revenue is the same thing as sales, right? We need to do that. So we need to just tell him, hey, revenue is kind of the same thing as sales guy. So please um, just um, use that. So let, let's see. Okay, hold on a second. Let me minimize this. All right, so here we have this, if you can see. I have some synonyms and some synonyms, I want to just, I've typed out all sorts of synonyms here. So revenue sum, somebody else can call it total sales, can call it sales, can call it total sales. So we ask someone to give us all the synonyms, all the way people type out things. What? How do they type things out so that we can um, use the, the type, what they've typed in our report? So we need to train Power BI to understand that revenue sum is also total revenue, is also sales, is also total sales. How do we do that? Well, the way you do that is you come to the relationship view. You click on this relationship view to the left, yeah? You click on relationship view. And once you get to relationship view, under the uh, modeling section, you have a something called synonyms. So if I click synonyms, synonyms, click on synonyms, so what synonyms does is, first of all, you click on the visual, see this fact file, click on synonyms. So for fact file, I want synonyms for fact file. Now you can click on any of these tables and say, you kind of program the synonyms. But here I want to program synonyms for the fact file. So to the right, you will see a tab and synonyms. So I'll go down to, let's say revenue sum, and then I'll put a comma there and now start typing all the other names for revenue, like sales, total, so sales, right? I put another comma. Um, let's say um, sales total. Let's even leave that. So that, I've just put two, two synonyms, right? Um, total sales and sales total. So those are synonyms to revenue sum. Now, if I come to my report and double click, and then I say um, total sales, now it makes sense, total sales by region. So you can imagine your manager, right? Your manager or your MD, all he wants to do is ah, learn about this um, Q, Q and A, and he, he calls it sales. So just total sales by region, yeah? Um, as a tree map, yeah? And that's it, comes out. So synonyms are very key. So when you're planning your data model, when you're planning to build your Power BI uh, reporting tool. Make sure you understand all the different ways that people call this. Maybe do a survey. Do a survey in your company. How, how what kind of reports? How, what are the different ways you name these things? Revenue. Like, for example, transaction counts. I don't think people call things transaction counts. Let's go down to, I think there's somewhere where we count the transactions. Transaction counts. So we can say, um, um, Let's just say quantity, no, no quantity, more customers, uh, customer purchases, or can someone tell me in the chat, what do you think is a good name for transaction count? We know what we mean by transaction count. Can you type a, a synonym you think we could use in the chat? So what do you think we should use for synonym for transaction counts? Let's just say maybe just count. Count, let me even just say count. No, 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 count doesn't make sense. How many transactions do you have? Sales, uh, walk-ins, <laughs> walk-in, let's say walk-in. So I guess when there's a transaction in your store, somebody walked in maybe. <laughs> Number of repeat purchases. No, repeat purchases. Um, repeat purchases are someone that bought and now came back to buy, but some people will just buy once. So the transaction being that someone has walked in, there's a transaction. Accountants in the house, give me some names, some nice synonyms. Let's say walk in. Let's see what walk in does to our report. Let's come in here and let me create another page here and just see uh, how many walk ins. Walk in, in for 2015. Ah, let's see. So, walk in for 2015, we had 21,000 walk ins. So, 21,000 transactions. So, synonyms are 
super, super excellent. And this will help Cortana understand your business more because of the synonyms now. So you could say, hey, how many walk-ins to our business? You don't need to remember that it's called transaction count. So, so this is a big, big game changer, really. It's, it's amazing what um, this simple synonym stuff could do. So just anytime you remember another synonym, come to the uh, actual DAX and type you, what are the steps? You go to your relationship view, you click on this synonym icon, and, and that's it. Now, language-wise, it's mostly English. Uh, we uh, speak, of course, English. And you have this linguistic schema. This is a more programmatic way of uh, programming your synonyms. But I won't go into that. This synonyms button here is so much easier and it's quite simple. And that will help your Q&A be excellent. Really cool. All right. Any questions? Just jump, pop it on the chat. But that's really what I wanted to talk about today mostly is the synonyms, which is excellent. And you can do all your reporting and we'll go online. Let me see if I can just quickly go online as well and show you this. How do we build this report? So this is a waterfall chart and we could build it with Power BI with Q&A quite easily. All you need to do this is revenue year on year, percentage variance by year and month. Okay. So, I mean, Power BI is that powerful. Revenue year on year, performance variance. So... Revenue, year on year, percentage, variance. Okay, so revenue year on year, YOY. Percentage, variance. Let me get that revenue. So I can go year on year, percentage, variance. By store. Um, 2015 as a waterfall, something chart, something like that. So you get the you get used to typing out all sorts of complex stuff like that to try and deliver or build reports, and then if you use synonyms very wisely then you will be able, just a natural way that someone asks for this. Your manager asks for this. Can you give me a blah, 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 blah? That thing he said, go and create it as synonyms there and your reports will come out. He probably won't need to ask you. He'll just type it himself. Right. So let me show you something else very quickly. We have updates in April. So I'm just going to play a few minutes of it and then I will close that i'll just give you quite a quick few minutes and what i advise you do is go to the uh use, go to youtube and be a uh, subscribe to power bi um power bi uh, channel on youtube also subscribe to our own channel on youtube as well so in fact let me tell you one thing you could also do there is a, actually a training on this next month that we have uh, in d brown consulting very very cool course on power bi so It'll be nice if you can join us and uh, learn a few things in the course. Let me pull that out for you. So it's, I'll first of all pull out the, there's a report automation in modern Excel we have online. So report automation, become a master in report automation. So I'll just leave that offer up for you and you could uh, click on it and join us next month. But let me quickly go online and see if I can see a Power BI. Let's go online to Power BI for you. One second. Let's quickly get back to slides and then I'll, I'll go online and see Power BI online. All right, guys. So this is our POG group. I know quite a few of us uh, haven't registered for this POG group. So it'd be nice if you, if you can go. I know a lot of us were in the meetup group, but the POG group is a bit different. The POG group allows you to um, at least uh, get notifications for all these webinars as well as ask questions. So you can really ask questions and get answers on Power BI on our POG group. So this is for the for Nigeria, especially for Nigeria. Let me type out the link for you on um, on the chat so they can join the POG group. So it's Power BI user group. It's www.pbiusergroup.com slash Lagos. So this is for Lagos. So I want you guys to click on it and join. So if you check on the chat, you see pbiusergroup.com slash Lagos. So just join our POG group and let's grow the POG group and keep on asking any questions on Excel and Power BI you ever have. Just come here and ask it and we'll answer that for you. 
Now, this is our online Power BI. I think, I'm um, not sure if we've published this report yet, but this is Power BI online. And with Power BI online, of course, you can still use Q&A. So you see this ask a question there? You could use that at any time to ask any question. So I could say the same sales, buy something, and you get an ask a question on Q&A. So here again is revenue, right? So revenue, and then the same thing you did in synonyms, you can do that as well online. So, so that's just a quick show revenue by, um, let's say revenue by what? Revenue by store or revenue by product. No, let's say by state. Okay, we don't have state in this database. Let's say revenue by customer. Well, that's going to be a very big report. That's too many customers, really. So revenue by customer, maybe revenue by customer city. Or revenue by city. Customer city is coming up as a chart city. Let's just say learning by city. It's going to come up as a map. And this is in, in the in the US and there's some revenue somewhere in Africa as well. So of course, this is the Bing service, um, pulling out a map and stuff. You can do all this in Power BI Desktop as well. So I kind of prefer you build everything in Power BI Desktop and then you now publish it online. So that's really, I think, the way to go. Right. Excel users, sorry, there's not much Excel for you today. It's mostly Power BI and Q&A is a key thing we want to show you and also synonyms, how to use those synonyms. So anybody have any questions? Just type in the questions and then I'll answer one or two questions before we leave. So type out any question you have on the chat. And if you want to, I could actually release your mic for you. So prior to this, did you all know about Q&A? As in, how many of you knew about Q&A prior to this? But of course, Paul, uh, Synonyms is new, so uh, maybe you didn't know about Synonyms. How many of us knew about Q&A in Power BI? We have a very intelligent group. A lot of us did. But Synonyms, so try out Synonyms. I think Synonyms are very powerful, so just try them out. Okay, now everybody knew about it. We'll try synonyms. Synonyms, very powerful. All right, any other questions? Questions for me? Nobody's asking me questions. I join in our Power BI user group. And um, let me go online to um, our website. You see that we have uh, Office Training Hub. You could do some free courses on Office Training Hub. So I advise you do this free course here, especially those that like Excel. So if you go to officetraininghub.com, you'll see this free Excel course, very powerful one. And for those doing financial modeling, we're going to have another webinar in the next one hour. You could join us for that. And yeah, so go to officetraininghub.com. And then next, next month, we have Power BI, we have a Power BI training for you next month. And so if you pop us an email at training.ebrandconsulting.net, we have a three-day Power BI course. So you come to our website, we go to training, you go to courses. So we have a Power BI course um, coming up in Check Business Intelligence. It's a report to an, an analytics in Power BI. That's our course on Power BI. So in three days, you learn how to build a data model. You learn some very cool DAX and stuff. But that's happening in May. We'll put that up for you immediately. But that's happening in May. So it's a three-day course, detailed course on Power BI. Okay, so hope to see you then. So this is what you're going to learn in the Power BI course. And if you're using Power BI, this is what you need to know. You need to know Power Query. Power Query is like your best friend. Power Query gets the data for you and automates that process of updating that data, which is the t most tedious thing in anybody's reporting repertoire. You get your data, you need to update it every month. So Power Query automate that for you. Then you would also learn, this is our course next month. So of course, uh, next month starting on the 5th. So actually our course next month is from the 7th to the 9th next month, 7th to 9th of May. 
And that's our power uh, reporting and analytics with Power BI. So you will also learn how to use the data model, or build a data model. You will learn the M language. Yeah, so yeah, we're gonna put the course online. Yeah, so we'll send you that course, Timizi. And uh, evaluation context is a very important thing called evaluation context. So if you if you can take you take your phone and take a picture of this screen. So if you're using Power BI, you need to know all these things. You need to know how to working with budget data, fact file, dimension files, Excel and Power BI. You need to know the linkages there, relationships, custom visuals, time intelligence formulas, variance formulas, anchor formulas, calculated columns, advanced concepts, dashboards, powerbi.com, how to use it, the DAX language itself, calculate function. One of the most important functions in DAX is the calculate function, standard visuals and the relationships. So these are all the skill sets you need to know to be able to use Power BI properly. And this is what you'll learn in the course next month. So join us next month and also go do our free courses online and watch out for all the free courses or additional free courses we're going to bring up. So guys, if I hope you enjoyed this short webinar and um, we hope to see you in the financial modeling for those joining us and the talent development webinar later. So thank you very much, guys, and we'll see you soon.